All right, it's time to start checking things a little more on the web page, starting with how to read and manipulate text. In this lecture, I'll show you two DOM element properties, text content and inner HTML. Each has its own approach to the DOM, and I'll explain when and how to use them. So first, let's look at the text content property. In simple words, you can use the text content property to read text values or set text values of the elements. Let's look at an example. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM. And then open the index.html file in the browser. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, Remember to link app.js file. The app.js file is currently blank, but you can find all the codes we have written so far in the app.js file from the exercise folder. First open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM, then open the folder called final, then select the file called app-final.js file. Now flip back to the browser, Refresh the page, and in the console, I'll select the heading element and get its text. I'll select the element using query selector method and assign the element to the variable my heading. So I'll type const my heading assignment operator document dot query selector. and pass in h1 selector. I'll press enter. So first, let's read the headings text content with my heading dot text content. I'll press enter. And as you can see, we get the headings text back, document object model. Now, if we assign a new string to text content, we can also update the headings text. So let's update it by typing my heading dot text content assignment operator and the string. This is a test. I'll press enter. As you can see, now the heading has a new text content. So now let's flip back to the index.html file and use text content property to make our app a little more interesting. Let's create an input to update the kind of list we are making. So in the index.html file, I'll add an input and button elements below the paragraph. And I'll give both elements the class description. Right below the paragraph, I'll add an input with the class description. Then right below the input, I'll add a button with the class description. The button will say update list description. And I'll also apply class description to the second paragraph. I'll save the change and in the app.js file, let's select all the elements we need namely the paragraph, text input, and a button, and assign them to const variables. So first, I'll select the input element by typing const input assignment operator document dot query selector and pass in the input tag. Then I'll select the paragraph element by typing const p assignment operator document dot query selector Since there are more than one paragraph element on the page, we need to use the class description to select just the one we want. So I'll pass in p dot description. 
Then I'll select the button element by typing const button assignment operator document dot query selector and pass in button. So next, right below, I'll call add event listener on button to listen for a click event when the button is clicked. So I'll type button dot add event listener First, I'll pass in the event name as click, then pass in a function as a callback for what to do when the event is happened or when the button is clicked. And when the button is clicked, we use the value of the text input to set the paragraph's text content property. So inside the function, I'll type p dot text content assignment operator then input dot value and let's also add a colon to the end of the input value by typing space addition operator space and then a colon inside of quotes All right, so I'll save the change, refresh the page. So now let's type something in this field. Let's say blue items and click the button. You see that now we have a list description of blue items. And notice that a colon was placed at the end. Good. Now let's look at the inner HTML property. Back in the app.js file, I'll just replace this text content property with inner HTML property. I'll save the chains. Refresh the page. I'll again type blue items. Click the button. You see that it functions exactly the same way. But keep in mind that the inner HTML property can do more than just handling a text. As its name suggests, it can also read and alter the elements on a web page. You can read and replace everything between the elements opening and closing tag. For example, first I'll open the console. Then I'll select the UL element in the console and store it in a variable. So I'll type let UL assignment operator document dot query selector and a pass in ul I'll press enter and now if we call inner html on the ul ul dot inner html I'll press enter as you can see we get a string of the html codes within the ul element and I can replace these strings of HTML tags and text to something else using inner HTML. Let's see how that works. So I'll type ul dot inner HTML assignment operator a set of quotes then inside the quotes I'll add opening and a closing list item tags. Inside the tags, I'll write apple juice. I'll press enter. As you can see, now there's only one list item that we added because we replaced all the list contents with this new HTML list item. All right, so well done. Now that we can alter textual content, up next, let's have a look at how to update the attribute of an element.